Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I thought I'd take some time to talk about the $1.8 billion settlement against the National Association of Realtors and Keller Williams, since everybody else is. Thought I'd share my opinion now that the dust is settled. I didn't want to jump in the day after. I really wanted to take time to read about it and figure out what's going on. First thing that comes to mind is the uh, attorney for the plaintiffs that uh, brought the class action lawsuit uh, needs to learn how to say realtor instead of relator. If you're going to sue realtors, pronounce it right. <laughs> relator. Everybody does it. So what is a realtor? A realtor is a designation that you get if you belong to the National Association of Realtors. Now here in Arizona, it's a requirement to join the NAR in order to get access to our local MLS so that we can list homes, show homes, unlock lock boxes. So the two are coupled together. If you're not a member of the NAR, National Association of Realtors, you're a real estate agent. You're not a realtor. Um, not that that carries a whole lot of weight with people, but there is a designation and there's a code of ethics with uh, NAR that you have to comply to and you have to take courses and you have to certify yourself that you understand the code of ethics uh, to keep the industry on the up and up. Now, I understand why this lawsuit uh, was very popular with people that don't like realtors and uh, the whole idea of the conspiracy to fix commissions. Now, to me, I don't see a conspiracy to fix commissions, and you shouldn't either, especially in this market. You can find anybody to give you any commission split you want. You, the National Association of Realtors, did have a requirement that said that the listing broker has to offer a commission to the cooperating agent, the buyer's agent. Never anywhere in any writing did it say how much you could offer a dollar. Now, is it true that you're seeing 2.5%, 3% consistently across the board? Yeah, that part's true. That's just kind of where the market is, has taken it over the decades. It Commissions go down when real estate's really brisk. They go up and real estate's really slow. So rather than debate that, I thought I'd just say, well, what, what do I expect now? Now that you have this big ruling, what's really going to happen? Uh, spoiler alert, um, nothing. Here's why. First of all, there, the requirement to pay a buyer's broker a commission has always been there, but there hasn't been a dollar amount. And so I don't see that changing. They will just strike that from any language that's out there. Just like the Pacific Northwest did about a year and a half ago. You don't have to offer an agent, buyer's agent, a commission. And nothing's changed up there. If you're in the Northwest, uh, leave me a comment below and let me know if you've seen any changes at all. Now, um, down here, like I say, you can always offer just a dollar. And the reason that you offer a commission is to get agents to um, bring you a buyer. We're in the commission business, folks. That's the way it works. Um, I know people don't like it, and I get it. And I get it because I think there's a huge disconnect between what we believe we do and what clients think we do or potential clients think we do. And for real estate agents, I think some of that's very, very well self-inflicted. For, you know, for example, I went to an event in Paradise Valley a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, and, and it was a multi-million dollar home, beautiful place. And just for flash, they had a couple Lamborghinis in the parking lot. Well, here were these agents with fancy suits on, leaning up against them, acting like they owned those cars, getting their pictures taken for their social media accounts. You know, looking ritzy, looking rich. You know, look at me, I sell million dollar homes. And then I was at a photo shoot with a team that I was on once where we all were told we needed to wear black and put on our suits and we all had this big team shoot and it was cool. But then the team leader went in the bar with the ladies in our team and they were beautiful women and they were smart too. I mean, I learned a lot from them. But they had their own private little glamour shot photo shoot. And I turned to one of the guys, I go, what's this got to do with writing a contract? So I think we hurt our image, you know. We're all rich because we're real estate agents. Well, the average realtor makes 44000 a year, the average. So why do people continue to portray that they're wealthy? 
Well, there are some very wealthy, successful realtors out there, no doubt. But I don't think anybody picks you because you drive a Lamborghini. So you're going to fight this image because you created it. Now, buyers, agents may not get a commission if the selling agent decides not to offer one up, which means the buyer's agent is going to have to have an agreement with the buyer that if there is no commission offered, the, the buyer will put up the commission. Well, I don't see very many buyers doing that. I think they're just going to go straight to the listing agent. And that's how the buyer agency started to begin with, because you used to just be able to go right up to the listing agent. You still can to this day. I've had buyers say, I think I can get a better deal if I negotiate with the listing agent. Okay, knock yourself out. Let me know how it gets, goes when you get to the inspection period. <laughs> that's where most deals go to die. Because he's looking out for the seller. He's not looking out for you. And buyers were getting hosed. And so buyer agency came to fruition. In other words, having a fiduciary duty to represent the buyer and protect them. Now, sellers are saying, well, I can save all kinds of money if I don't offer that commission. Yep, you probably can. Buyers are saying, I can't afford to pony up more money at the closing table. So I'm just going to go directly to the listing agent take the risk. That's where it'll happen if commissions aren't offered. Now, if there's no commission offers offered on a house for a buying agent, um, is the buying agent going to take the client over there? Well, we're not supposed to deny it. We're not supposed to say, well, like, I'm not showing you that house because they're not offering me any compensation. But let's not kid ourselves. We don't work for free. I don't think anybody's going to do it. They're, they're just going to have a frank conversation with the buyer and go, you know, they're not compensating me anything for it, but here's my fees. Here's what I charge. Agents may end up saying, I'm going to charge you so much per house to show you a home. I'll charge you this much to write a contract, this much to get you through the inspection period, and all of the other steps that are in there and do it on a a la carte basis. But for now, there's going to be litigation um, appeals for, I'd say, at least a year. Um, and they're going after other brokerages as well. As soon as this guy made his millions in this lawsuit, I think I saw a number. He's made like $80 million, the, the uh, lawyer. And the plaintiffs, all the people that are in that class action lawsuit, I think they get between six and 800 bucks each. Um, he went, turned, He already had the paperwork filled out as soon as he won. He slapped two more lawsuits, and EXP is one of those. Now, that doesn't make any sense to me because EXP were individual agents. I can charge you whatever I want. I sit down with you and go, here's my fee. Here's my commission. Here's what uh, I've been offering buyer's agents. And you don't like it. You don't have to sign the contract. You can go get somebody to do it for, for less. You've always had that freedom. So I don't know why they're saying that EXP needs to be sued because we're not fixing commissions. But I'm not an attorney. I know there's right, there's wrong, and there's the law. Now, listing agents, um, and look, listing agents and buyer's agents are the same thing. You're a listing agent if you have a listing. If you don't have a listing, you're a buyer's agent. So there aren't, you aren't specifically trained either way. We're trained to manage people through the minefield of regulation, which is real estate. And uh, I know I see the comments all the time. I'm not paying anybody commission just to unlock doors. Well, if that's all you think we do, then, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't pay a commission either. Get in the middle of a transaction and let me know how it's going because there are some pinch points. You're able to sell a house without an agent uh, when the market was hot. You were able to just stand on your porch and go for sale, and you get buyers and shows up, go directly to the escrow company, get it done. You can do it. Uh, there's risk, but some people handle that very well, so this real estate market, I think, is going to get a little fluid. I think it's going to change. I don't know how it's going to change, but based on some of the posts and videos I've seen that said that realtors are screwed, they're dead, real estate is now gone, it's just clickbait. It's more hype. I don't see any huge changes coming along with this ruling, and especially this year. And like I say, if you're from the Northwest, let me know what kind of commissions you're seeing out there. That the funny part is we're not even allowed to discuss commissions with the other agent. I can't call them and go, you know, I'd love to sell your house, but you're only offering 1%. We're not allowed to have that conversation. It is what it is. If they put in the MLS that they're offering 1%, then that's what it is. I don't get to call them and change it. 
So it's kind of like if you've lost your dog, how big of a reward do you want to offer to get people to start looking for your dog? That's what buyer's agent commissions are. And the buyer that shows up is being represented. Now, sellers argue and say, well, why am I offering a commission to somebody that's going to negotiate against me? Well, that commission is built into the price of your home and the buyer is taking on that loan and basically taking on that commission on both sides and financing it over 30 years. So, yes, on paper, you're paying the commission, but yes, on paper for the buyer, they're paying the commission. This has been a system that's worked for a long time. And uh, is it going to go away? I think it's going to go through some modifications, but the sky is not falling. If you have any questions, shoot me an email, Rick, rickhelps.com. Take care.